So now let us discuss about antimicrobial susceptibility test that is our AST. Antimicrobial susceptibility test is important because it helps us to find the drug specific drug that is required for diseases mainly like pneumonia like uh, tuberculosis etc because there are chronic conditions so on prolonged use of a certain antibiotics this uh, pathogenic organism will get a resistance towards it okay based on time on time they will get resistance so we have to change on the antimicrobial agent that is our antibiotics we have to continuously change it on okay in order to uh, make it susceptible towards it so for testing whether an antimicrobial agent is uh, war, is uh, resistance or susceptible towards an uh, microbes we have to test antimicrobial susceptibility test so there are two methods of antimicrobial susceptibility test first one is our phenotypic method then second one is our genotypic method in genotypic method the name itself indicate here we detect what here we detect gene okay gene responsible for antimicrobial resistance okay so usually we detect gene by pcr so you already know if you detect gene it is also known as molecular method okay because we are detecting gene and in phenotypic method there are mainly four different types of method first one is our disk diffusion disk diffusion method test then there is our uh, dilution test okay disc diffusion and dilution test are of two types we will discuss it later dilution test could be our uh, broth dilution or it could be agar dilution if it was in broth then it is broth dilution test if it was done in agar then it is agar dilution test then third one is our epsilometer or e test e test stand for epsilometer test so epsilometer is a strip okay is a strip which consists of different concentration of antimicrobial agent we will discuss it later epsilometer test then the fourth one is automated test automated test so in automated test what we do automated test we use the help of machines so machines like uh, white tech to then there is uh, phoenix okay phoenix this two helps us in determining automated test so let us dive into the first method that is the disk diffusion test okay disk diffusion test so in disk diffusion test what we do is here that we basically uh, put a disk and diffuse it into a culture media okay if it was resistance what happened there will be grow of bacteria around the disk if it was susceptible what happens there is a zone of inhibition that is lack of growth around the disk so that method is called as our first method is kirby bow kirby bow kirby Bowers disk diffusion method. You see, mm. you see, there is a zone of inhibition, there is no growth here. Zone of inhibition, so zone of inhibition is the under diameter. Okay, so that means it is susceptible. There is no zone of inhibition, so this uh, microbe is resistant towards this disk. Okay, so it is resistant. So you see usually we use the cultural media here is our MH agar, Muller Hinter agar, okay, Muller Hinton agar or if it was a fastidious bacteria which requires high number of nutrients, okay, for the growth like our Streptococcus pyogenes, Streptococcus pneumonia, we usually use MH blood agar, Muller Hinton blood agar, okay, that means nothing, we add additional blood, sheep RBC. Okay, so what are all the MH blood agar is usually used for fastidious bacteria bacteria like uh, streptococcus pyogenes or it could be streptococcus okay pneumonia these are some examples for first days bacteria which requires a much blood agar so i hope you understand kirby bow's disk diffusion method the next disk diffusion method is also similar to it but we use a control strain here so this method is known as stokes disk diffusion test you see here addition to the test subject we use a control strain so upper one by third and lower one by third we use a control strains which zone of inhibition of them is already known this zone of inhibition is already known okay okay then the middle one by third what we use middle one by third we use our test strain okay so we compare the zone of inhibition okay we compare this zone of inhibition of our test with that of the zone of inhibition of the control so that's how we uh, 
detect stroke's disc diffusion test so it is more advantageous because we can compare okay we can determine whether it is uh, resistant whether it is uh, sensitive whether it is intermediate based on these observations okay so let us discuss what are all the inference from the stroke's disc diffusion test the first one we can tell whether it is sensitive a whether a bacteria is sensitive okay if it is sensitive then what what are the observation the zone radius that is this is the zone radius and their and their diameter is called the zone of inhibition zone radius means from the half is called the zone radius the zone radius of test sorry the zone radius of test should be greater than or equal to zone radius of our what control in order to say it is sensitive okay and this is the first condition and if it is no less than zone radius of control if zone radius of test is less than that of zone radius of control then it should not exceed greater than 3 millimeter that means mm, should not exceed greater than 3 millimeter you see For example, let us take mm, if the zone of radius is less than that of zone zone radius of control, then it should not exceed greater than three millimeter. Let us say this is three millimeter. So this uh, zone radius should be come between here, 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 etc. Okay, it should come between this line. Okay, so that's what in my sensitive. Then let us discuss the next possibility. Yeah, uh, by by microbe is called as intermediate towards antimicrobial agent if here zone radius of test should be less than that of zone radius of control one condition and should be um, zone radius of test should be less than by 3 millimeter compared to zone radius of control okay then third zone radius of test should be greater than 2 millimeter so let us discuss what you mean by intermediate you see first con third condition is that the zone radius should be this is the 2 millimeter okay zone radius should be greater than 2 millimeter so it come above this okay and also if this is the 3 millimeter zone radius should be less than by 3 millimeter when compared with the zone radius of control so yeah so this area the uh, zone of inhibition should be in between this area for we to say it is intermediate okay then our third observation a bacteria is resistant toward mm, a bacteria is resistant is called as resistant okay resistance towards antimicrobial disc if there is no zone of radius or if zone of radius is present it should be less than 2 millimeter okay that means either there is no zone of radius or it should be less than 2 millimeter that is when the zone of radius comes in between here it is called a resistant that means this is almost look like a resistant okay to me so that's how the Stokes disc diffusion test is done. I hope you understand. Now let us go into the second test, second phenotypic test that is our dilution test. It is very easy and interesting. Okay, so dilution test can be two, whether it can, could be in our agar media or it could be in, done in our broth media. So first month, uh, let us discuss about uh, broth dilution test because we are doing it in a broth in a test tube okay broth dilution test so what we do here is that we uh, dilute our antimicrobial disc in a series okay so let us say you see the first test tube consists of only one microgram per milliliter of uh, antimicrobial agent and the last test tube consists of 64 microgram per milliliter of our antimicrobial agent so it is diluted in a series okay in increasing factor along here so in this uh, series concentration what we do we culture our bacteria okay so there is turbidity means there is growth of bacteria there is loss of turbidity means there is uh, bacteria are dying okay so at uh, this is at which minimum test tube where the first 
uh, turbidity is low, that concentration is known as minimum inhibitory concentration. That means at the concentration at which the bacteria dies is called minimum inhibitory concentration. So let us see here you can see the turbidity is low at the test tube this okay this test tube that means 8 microgram per milliliter concentration of uh, antimicrobial agent uh, there is loss of turbidity so that means this is the concentration where uh, bacteria are starting to die okay so this is the minimum inhibitory concentration next what we do is that we take the cultures from these samples these test tubes these series test tubes okay and we culture it in a agar medium okay so what happens in agar medium when we see, we can see at the minimum inhibitory concentration, actually there is growth of bacteria, but the num less number of bacteria are there when compared with the initial concentration. But there is bacteria. So at the which concentration the bacteria entirely dies, that concentration is called as minimum bactericidal concentration. So minimum bactericidal concentration is the concentration at which the bacteria entirely die. Okay. So at for this example here at 32 microgram per milliliter, all the bacteria will die. Okay. So that is the minimum bactericidal concentration. So from this method, we can detect MIC and the MBC. So I hope you understand. So we can detect at which concentration the bacteria will start to die and at which concentration the bacteria will entirely die. Okay, so that is the broad dilution test. The next one is the same test but it is done only in agar. Here in broad and also done in agar but in here only done in agar. So it is called as agar dilution test. It is more advantageous over broad dilution test. Let us explain. Okay, so you see what we do here is that for a letter, this is an example, okay. So let us take four petri dish with an agar culture, okay. So in each agar medium, I have diluted a concentration of an antimicrobial agent. Let us say in first one, I had only two, but here I had four, here I have eight, and here it is 16. 16 microgram per milliliter, okay, of concentration of an antimicrobial agent is here. So at first medium, I inoculated a strain of air. So this one is the A and this one is B. Okay. Sorry, this one is B. This is bacteria A, this is bacteria B. So I take an inoculum of bacteria A and cultivated it in here. Okay. Also in 4, also in 8 and also in 16. I have done it. But later on at 8 and 16, what happened? There is lack of bacteria here. That is the bacteria in 8 concentration. The bacteria of A are dead. Okay, so this is the this is the minimum bactericidal concentration for bacteria A. And now let us take an inoculum of bacteria B and again cultivate in the same petri dish. Okay, I cultivated it in here. Sorry, I cultivated it in here. At 2 concentration, at 4 concentration, at 8 concentration, also at 16 concentration I cultivated here but later on I find out there is no B bacteria in 16 concentration. That means at 16 concentration the bacteria B all dead. Okay, so this is the minimum, sorry, this is the minimum uh, bactericidal concentration for bacteria B. Okay, so you see this is how we detect minimum bactericidal concentration here. So what are the advantages of agar dilution test over broth dilution test? Here we can directly detect MBC. We don't want to detect MIC. Okay, we can directly go into MBC. Directly can detect MBC. Also we can do test on many bacteria simultaneously you see i can test both a and b and simultaneously on the same culture okay so that's two advantages of agar dilution test of agar dilution test so this is the second test now let us discuss about the third test that is epsilon test epsilometer test okay epsilometer test or also called as e test the mechanism here it is both of that of the dilution so diffusion and also that of the dilution diffusion in case here we have zone of inhibition okay zone of inhibition but it is an 
ellipsoid zone of inhibition not a or, uh, round dog okay? it is ellipsoid zone of inhibition i'll say dilution in terms because in e strips we are seriously diluted serially diluted our antimicrobial agent from lowest concentration to the highest concentration so here is the highest concentration okay here is the lowest concentration so at a certain concentration what happened the zone of inhibition starts to remises and touches the E strip okay so at that concentration there is inhibition of bacteria will start okay so that is the minimum inhibitory concentration so that here it is minus um, here it is 0.6 microgram per milliliter i hope you understand how epsilometer test is done okay so that's all about epsilometer then the fourth method is automated test that is not that much of clinical importance automated automated test because just because there is nothing else to do just put it in a machines like our white tech uh, white tech to then there is a phoenix okay in phoenix white tech is the most commonly used in india and also one of the advantages of white tech too is that we can also do uh, test on do test on bacteria along with yeast also okay we can test on bacteria and also yeast okay we can test on test on bacteria and yeast in rest of the machines we can only test bacterial antimicrobial susceptibility but here we can anti yeast susceptibility can be also done okay along we can do yeast that is the automated method now let us go into the molecular method or what genotypic method genotypic method or molecular method genotypic or molecular method so in genotypic or molecular method what we detect here we detect gene okay gene is usually detected by pcr for example you see the van gene there is a gene called van okay van gene this gene give resistance for uh, among for vancomycin okay resistance for vancomycin is given by van gene so two organism which has van genes are vancomycin resistant vancomycin resistant streptococcus aureus we call it as vancomycin resistant streptococcus aureus okay aureus sorry streptococcus aureus then also there is another organism called vancomycin vancomycin resistant enterococcus so these two have what van gene so that's why they are resistant towards vancomycin antibiotics so i hope you understand the genotypic method and phenotypic method now let us do the interpretation from ast what all the things we can get okay so from ast we can interpret whether a bacteria is a sensitive intermediate or a, a susceptibility dose dependent or resistance okay so first one is sensitive we can say a bacteria is sensitive if the antimicrobial agent sorry sensitive if it is effective at a high dose story effective at a standard dose that is a uh, antimicrobial agent and antimicrobial agent is known as sensitive if that antimicrobial agent is effective at standard dose okay an antimicrobial agent is called as what intermediate intermediate or i sensitive or yes okay if intermediate if that is less effective at the standard dose but it will become effective at the high dose so we when we increase the dose at high to high dose okay when we increase the dose then it is effective that is the intermediate so that the antibiotics is called as intermediate then we can say dose susceptibility dose dependent okay we can say susceptible dose dependent this dd okay so susceptible dose dependent means what active only at high dose okay that is a susceptible dose dependent then there is resistance the yeah, antimicrobial agent is known as resistant resistant if it is resistant towards the bacteria if a bacteria is resistant towards it okay that is not active 
at any dose. So this is how we interpreted from AST. And also we can call, we classified our antimicrobial agents into two based on into three based on their spectrum. Okay, based on their spectrum and their resistance capacity. Okay, so let us divide it in. That the first one is our first line, first line antimicrobials, antimicrobials. So what do you mean by first line antimicrobials? These are the antimicrobial agent which has narrow spectrum. Okay, they have narrow spectrum. Narrow spectrum in terms what? They are only effective towards a certain species or certain strains of a bacteria. Okay, that is the narrow spectrum. Also, if an organism is resistant, resistant, if an organism is resistant towards this first line antimicrobial, then it is resistant should is very high. Okay, then that resistance is very high. Then there is second line of second line antimicrobials. A second line antimicrobials has broad spectrum because they can act uh, on many bacteria. Okay, they have a broad spectrum. They have a broad spectrum function. Okay, they can act on many bacteria. And if a pathogenic organism is resistant, then that resistance is only intermediate. Okay, only intermediate. So these are the condition for the second line antimicrobials. Then there is the third one that is our restricted restricted antimicrobials. As the name suggests, it is restricted. Okay, if there is no uh, first line or second line antimicrobials towards the pathogens, then only we use our restricted antimicrobials. Okay, because why they are restricted? Because they have bro very uh, what very extended spectrum. Okay, extended spectrum they have very extended spectrum that means almost all the organism that means almost all the bacteria are susceptible towards this okay they have very extended spectrum also resist if a organism is resistant towards uh, this antimicrobial agent there will be only a minimum organism which is resistant towards this antimicrobial agent even though if the resistance it is very low okay that resistance is very low that means there is a possibility they will die Okay, so why the, the restricted antimicrobials are restricted? Because they can kill a wide spectrum. So what happen? Our uh, common commensals and our normal flora will also die along with the pathogen. Okay, so there is no use. It is make only more harm. Okay, so usually in treatment, we only give first line of antimicrobials and second line of antimicrobials. Usually only first line antimicrobials. And in chronic conditions like tuberculosis, pneumonia, etc. We use a combination of the first line and the second line together. Okay. So that's all about antimicrobial susceptibility. That's just like an icing on a cake. I hope you understand. I hope you enjoyed this class. So let us see in the next class. Till then, bye.